Now moving on to calculate the surface integral, we're going to have to break this up into two parts. We're going to break it up into the curved upper uh, spherical part here and the bottom uh, flat bottom over here. So we're going to break up this closed surface into two components. So let's calculate the surface integral over the curved uh, spherical portion first. So the surface integral is equal to the uh, vector field, which in this case is equal to uh, r cosine r hat plus some other terms, and we're not going to have to deal with those because the dA, so remember for the surface integral, we have the vector field dot dA, and dA is uh, has the magnitude of a tiny piece of the surface of tiny piece of the surface over here, plus the, the multiplied by the uh, vector that is perpendicular to the surface. And as you know, for a spherical shell, the per, uh, d direction that is perpendicular to the surface is just the r direction. So it's just r hat. So in this case over here, uh, the only the there is a, the dA is going to be equal to r squared side theta d theta d phi r hat. And this r hat is going to multiply with this, and you could get 1. And then with the theta and the phi terms, uh, since they're orthogonal, they're just going to disappear. It's going to be equal to 0. So also, uh, on the surface of the sphere, the vector field, the r is going to be, is be restricted to big R. So we can write this out like that. So we get r to the power of 3, sine theta, cosine theta, d theta, d phi. So theta goes from 0 to pi over 2, phi goes from 0 to 2 pi. So we're going to uh, integrate out the phi, the number of phi terms inside, so we get 2 pi. So we're going to uh, put the 2 on the inside, so we get sine 2 theta again. And just like before, as we've evaluated, this integral is equal to 1. So in the end, we get pi out to the power of 3. So we, we can pretty much guess the other part of the uh, surface integral is going to be equal to 2 over 3 power to the power of 3, because they must add up together to be equal to this. So we'll check just that. So once we, so now we're going to evaluate the surface integral for the bottom component over here. So first of all, uh, let us figure out what the vector field should be. So once again, we need to evaluate this expression. So the vector field should be, so uh, when we're down here, theta is equal to pi over 2. Well, cosine pi over 2 is equal to 0. So we don't, at least we don't have to worry about this component. So th sine pi over 2, that's equal to 1. So we get r times theta hat. So we get r times theta hat. For the other component, this is again equal to 1. So we get r cosine phi times uh, the phi direction. Now for dA, essentially here we have, we're using polar coordinates. So we're integrating around the xy plane. So we have polar coordinates with r and phi, so r, uh, r ranges from 0 to big R, phi ranges from 0 to 2 pi. So essentially we have polar coordinates, and the dA for polar coordinates is just equal to dr times r d phi. And uh, so for the direction of dA, it's going to be perpendicular to the surface over here, right? And because this is lying on the xy plane, obviously the direction that is perpendicular to xy is going to be the z direction. And then once you're down to pi over 2, so once your axis is down here, so once your theta, once you lower it down to pi over 2, the theta direction essentially is just going to, you can imagine having a pivot and then pushing it down. So as theta keeps on increasing, at the xy plane is just going to go straight down. So when theta is equal to pi over 2, the uh, theta direction is actually going to be equal to the negative z direction. So the negative z direction is straight down perpendicular to the xy plane. And also because of this, incidentally, also perpendicular to this uh, spherical plane, uh, circular plane over here that we're considering. So quite conveniently, uh, the dA is going to have a direction of theta hat. So once we do the dot product, you see that this term goes away and then we're only going to be left with, there is an r, so we would be left with r squared dr d phi and the theta hat they can dot together they're just going to be equal to one so this is the this is what this surface integral is going to turn into so you specify the bounds of the variables 
So if you don't believe me on this, so what I just did was I gave you an intuitive uh, reasoning about why dA should be equal to this. You can also prove this rigorously using a cross product, as I have done for the previous uh, one of my previous videos. So you can check out that if you're interested. So uh, evaluating this integral over here, that dr gets r to the power of three over three, and then integrating out the phi, you get two pi. So you get two over three pi r to the power of three. And if you uh, combine it with this component over here, you essentially get the answer that we've expected, that we've been expecting. So you can see it's the same as this. So the divergence theorem checks 